This video and the accompanying article is going to demonstrate the steps I took in making the Rocking Rollers Freaky Ford Coaster. This is the one we're going to make and these are the plans that came from ToyMakingPlans.com plan set. I'll be demonstrating how to take a common piece of spruce 2x8 lumber from that we're going to cut it out and make a beautiful freaky Ford. Then we're going to demonstrate how I took a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF and again made another freaky Ford. And then we're going to use a piece of cedar. And from this cedar, we made the third Freaky Ford. In the video, I will be demonstrating how to make a template to make the various bodies of the cars. and the associated fenders. I'll be introducing to you a different router bit. We started with the quarter inch shaft half inch double flute router flush trim router bit. We changed over to a half inch shaft two inch blade for a flute router. I will be introducing to you a new shop tool called sanding drums and with the sanding drums I'll be introducing a sanding drum jig for your drill press which has interchangeable center pieces to accommodate the various sizes of the sanding drums. And then in the end you're going to see how all these little freaky Fords were painted and constructed. Now with a sanding drum locked down in position I can comfortably take my template and sand its profile. I have no possibility of tipping it into the drum. I have a flat surface. These are on equal planes and I can do everything quite comfortably. Continue sanding until I reach the profile I wish to use. Now that's not the normal way I sand. It would usually be from the opposite direction. It would be this way. Sometimes I need a little help when I'm doing freehand rough cutting around my templates. Because I'm not following the actual template tracing I'm going to be cutting outside of this edge. It would be nice to really have something to follow. So I'm going to show you a simple trick on how to introduce another line. I'm going to take a washer. I'm going to insert my pencil into the washer and use the spacing and trace around my template. Now that would give me approximately an eighth of an inch so I can cut around my, my template for, uh, for routing. If I wish I have a larger space, I'll just use another size washer and use the same, same method and trace around my template. Remove my template and here I have it. I have a the template tracing itself, eighth of an inch on top of that for a nice uh, room around the uh, the template for rough cutting. And if I wish a larger one, I can go another eighth of an inch, which gives me a total of a quarter inch around the tracing. Very simple to do, very easy. 
and believe me it does help okay eye protection is on hearing protection is on the router bit has been raised to give us a safe amount of area to follow the uh, bearing let's route this Let's take a look and see how our results are. I'm going to align these up just by hand. All right. Use a quick clamp just to hold it together. And let's rotate it and see what it looks like. Nice and smooth. Edges look great. Nice details. We'll flip her over. Even on the bottom. Even on the back side, on the back side. This is going to be a very easy glue up because the peaches the pieces are hundred percent matching each other. Love it. Small parts with a template require a lot of double-sided tape. I like to apply a generous amount over the edge. Press it down really nice. And then cut it off with the X-Acto blade following the edge. Remove the backing paper. That's the easy part. Apply my template to the piece part. Press it down and hold it in place. Check it for shifting. Okay, we're good to go. Time to router some small parts. I have mounted the fender onto the plexiglass with two screws. Double sided taped <clears throat> my stock piece on the bottom, 3 quarter inch uh, MDF. I do not need a guide pin on this because I'm going to use the edge of the dust collecting system as my pivot point. You're going to see me move the piece in various ways because I'm going to have obstructions. I'm going to be hitting here while I do it. I'm going to be hitting here while I do it. So I'm going to be moving in all kinds of ways to get the uh, routing completed. You'll probably see a buildup 
of debris under the plexiglass because of the static electricity. But let's give it a try. Let's power up the uh, vacuum. Power up the rotor. And let's do it. Okay, so there is a nice copy. This one's going to need uh, a little bit of sanding, just, just a tiny bit. But what an easy way of making multiple components all the same. My hands were away from the spinning router bit at all times. I had perfect control over the workpiece constantly applying downward pressure all right so I'm not tilting it in and out ah I think I love it give it a try I'm going to change the setup now to do some serious routering I'm going to change the half inch router bit flush trim router bit with a quarter inch diameter shaft to a half inch router bit with a one half inch diameter shaft. This one has two flutes, two cutting edges. This one has four cutting edges. The cutting edges also are at a length of two inches. That will easily accommodate routering some stock which has been glued together which was inch and a half. I'm going to router the MDF. I'm going to router the pine. I'm going to router the cedar. I am going to put on the uh, template and I'm going to put on the uh, plexiglass for safety. This is going to be exciting routing. I've glued together two pieces of three quarter inch MDF to give me a total thickness of one and a half inches. Then I cut the template out on the bandsaw giving me now my stock material one and a half inches. This material has been mounted onto the template. The template's been screwed down to the plexiglass top. A two inch four flute 
router bit has been installed and now we're ready to route it. And there you have it, a perfect copy of the template. Just requires a little bit of sanding. Excellent. I've got a little bit of a chip out in here, not a problem. The router bit actually started to rise a little bit for some reason, I don't know why, so it's not holding and heated up and melted the plexiglass. But that's okay, that's fixable. Got a little bit of a tear out in here, all right? But all this can easily be repaired. I'm a little concerned about doing the cedar this thick. I'm concerned about chip out. I hope the uh, bit's not going to grab it. We'll take this one nice and slow. <laughs> It does look pretty good. It does look pretty good. A little rough in here, but easily sandable. But other than that, nice finish, nice edges. The little burn marks, we can take care of those by sanding those out. Not bad. I've decided to make the windows using the drill press 
and a sanding drum. I positioned a three quarter inch hole for the front of the window and positioned a five eighths hole for the back of the window. My first test was not really acceptable. The window detail came off off center. The the back of the window tilts up. I think I like it better with the back of the window tilting down. But it does show you that it does produce a nice clean hole. So I reset the back 5H drill bit closer and lower and redid the test. And lo and behold, here we have a better looking window for this model. All right, the window is tilting towards the back. Okay, looks pretty natural. Looks exactly what the Freaky 4 requires. After drilling the test piece, I went ahead and drilled it into the one and a half inch thick MDF model. And it came out perfect. So I'm going to continue to do all the uh, toys this way. So now I'm going to show you the process and the steps I did to make these. A three quarter inch drill bit has been installed into the drill press and we're ready to drill the front of our window. The depth stop has been adjusted so it just pierces the bottom of the wood giving an indent mark on the reverse side. Let's go ahead and drill. good to go from the opposite side. Let it center itself and continue. There you have it. Nice and smooth and clean. Both sides. There's a good looking hole. Now I'll drill the back part of the window using a 5 8 Forstner drill bit. Exactly the same as I did the three quarter inch hole. Drill down to the depth stop, flip the piece over, you can see the indent hole, and continue from this side. Let it center itself. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to clean up these areas here with the same bit. I'm going to remove the 5H uh, drill bit now and install the extended or extra long sanding drum. The half inch sanding drum has been mounted into the drill press. I'm going to insert, we're going to take these little edges off. I've marked them in pencil. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. Marked it in pencil. It's just a guideline on where, how far or how deep I wish to sand down to. We're going to put it through the piece we worked on. We're going to lock the uh, table in place 
and start sanding that edge. Stop sanding, raise it up. Let's clean, and we'll do this side, but let's clean off our, our desk first. Using the crate block extends the life of the drums considerably. Block again. And there you go. Before I apply any sealer or primer to my projects, I like to do a dry fit. I'll take some of the parts and position where I think they should be. Use some setup tools like these little wheels, which are nothing more than just a rough cut dowel, a rough cut wheel and a dowel placed in it. Just pressure fit. Put them in position, line everything up, and take a look at what's the best positioning. Over here I've already done that. I put the wheels down, I put the fenders in place, All right? I like the positioning, then remove the wheel, trace out the outline All right. and now I know where I'm going to apply the sealer or the primer I have to go at least up to the line but most of the time I go past the line I'll come in with my sealer and I will paint past the line and into the area basically painting up into here this gives me lots of room for really good surface to surface adhesion when I'm gluing the mating parts. Here on the pine piece I'll show you another another thing. If I'm going to spray paint with primer then I must mask off these areas. Again, nothing more then to place the part in its position, trace the location, apply some green tape over it. You will see through the green tape where the lines are. And I just retraced that. I just went ahead and traced it over. Using an X-Acto blade, I now just cut right into the area here allowing me to remove the rest of the tape. Now I can go ahead and spray paint wherever I want and when I'm finished just remove the uh, the tape and here's my good adhesion area. I'm not too concerned about scoring the wood in this area because it will be covered by the fender when glued. And that's what I usually do when I'm preparing my pieces prior to sealing and priming. Before I start demonstrating how I apply the sealer, which will be the Delta all-purpose sealer, using what I call my rough brush, I like to talk about the three types of wood I've selected to make these toys from. One will be MDF, the second will be the pine. And the third will be 
the cedar. Now I have not traced out my fenders on this cedar for location. I don't wish to see any pencil marks. I have taken the scrap piece away and prepared four pieces for testing. I would like to see what my test piece looks like after applying Cynthia's non-toxic beeswax paste all by itself. I would like to put a coat of cedar on another or one or two coats of cedar on another, sanding in between with 320 grit sandpaper. And then I'd like to put the varnish. I'll use a Delta varnish also on this project. So until I determine what finish I want on the cedar, because I don't want to paint that, uh, we'll have to wait. Applying cedar to the MDF is pretty straightforward. Saturate your brush. I'm going to apply it to the edge first. I'm being quite liberal. MDF does not have grain, but because we've cut it from the normal uh, manufacturing side, which has been pressed and heated, uh, it acts like a grain. So this is going to soak up a lot of uh, sealer. It's going to require a second coat, and I will probably sand it with 320 sand grit paper uh, prior to doing the second coat. I'm going to do the edges right now, just to show you. Oops. Yeah, I'm putting it on thick, as you can see. I'm not concerned about the bubbles because I will be sanding this later on. And I'm only going to do the edges right now because I can hold it on the two sides. Just get rid of some lines here. Okay, that's it. The MDF is sealed. So I'm going to put that on my paint drying rack. Now, using my standard trick of hot milk gluing a nail to the bottom of a piece. This is the underside which we glue to the to the toy. I can now use this as a handle and rotate this piece any way I wish for applying sealer. So I'll just do this quickly so you can see. I can do the edges. Oh, I ran out of sealer. Let's just put this down. What a wonderful little handle the snail makes. Okay, three sides of the four sides have been sealed. We'll let that sit. Put it in the paint drying rack and pick up our next piece. The MDF car has been sealed with sealer, two coats, and sanded in between with 320 grit sandpaper. Now it's time to paint the vehicle. I've already painted the sides, and these sides have received three coats of paint, and again sanded with 320 in between each coat. You can see the area that I have not painted in, so I can have a good wood to wood surface when gluing my fenders on. So let's go ahead and start applying the paint to it. The brush has been saturated already. I'm using my what I call my fine tip brush and we'll just lay it on. Now 
nothing to it, just like you're painting anything else. We'll do one coat. Let it sit, sand it, put a second, and take a look if we need a third coat. This first coat can be pretty liberal because it is going to be sanded down. And that's it. Let's just leave it to dry and we'll get a second coat within the hour. During the process of routering the pine, I told you there were two areas where I had some tear out. And these are the two areas here. And the reason of the tear out is as the blade's turning this way, not a problem because I'm following the grain. The blade is pushing down on the grain and cutting across it. When I come up to this section, you can see that the grain direction is this way. So as I'm routering into it, it's grabbing the edge of the grain and pulling it out. Hence I got the tear out in this point. And the same problem here. The grain direction you can see from the center is out. But no problems here because it's routering in this way. And it's pushing down and coming out this way. But here I got some tear out. Not a problem, I just filled that in. Sanded it down, and we're good to go to prime, or paint. Again, I'm just going to saturate the brush, right? You can see it's going to require more than one coat. The pine reacts a little bit differently to the paint than the, the MDF. This piece has also been sealed twice and sand it in between with 320 grit sandpaper. I think this car just might need uh, three coats if not four. Make sure you don't have a lot of dripping on the edges here. We'll clean that up. Alright, first coat is done. We'll let that dry for an hour and come back and sand it down. Apply the second coat, sand it down, apply the third coat, and we should be good to go. You see me apply liberally the primer to the fenders. So here's a fender which has been primed or sealed I should say. Sealed two times and sanded in between and it has been painted three times with sanding in between. All right. And I've taken it one step farther. I have applied a varnish to the finish. To give it that nice shine, I use the Kraft Gloss Varnishing. So all that remains to do is finish off the one fender, finish painting the cars, and start assembling this vehicle. I've completed the wheels also. Each wheel has been painted two times. Very light sanding in between and I've taken it to the next step and applied a coat of varnish to it just to give it a little bit more a little more of a shine now I didn't use the hot milk glue gun trick on the nails on this one it wasn't necessary the diameter hole is just a little smaller than the actual diameter of the head of the nail all that's necessary is to press it in 
on an angle, straighten up, lock it in place, and there you go. There's your handle on a wheel, easy for painting, not a problem. Earlier in the video, we discussed what finish should be applied to the cedar. This is the natural cedar, unfinished. This is the cedar that has Cynthia's non-toxic beeswax applied to it. And this is the cedar which has been sealed and two coats of varnish placed on top of it. And let's take a look at the results here. Alright, we'll flip them this way. Look at them this way. So I've elected to put a coat of sealer on it and two coats of varnish on it. And I've applied Cynthia's non-toxic beeswax to it. And here's our results. Alright. The difference in fenders is because the dog took the piece I was going to cut the fenders on her and chewed it up so I had to grab another piece of cedar which just didn't match my original cut looks pretty good to me what do you think? now there's a nice looking car Ain't she sweet? See her coming down the street. Now I ask you very confidently, ain't she sweet? Ain't she nice? Look her over once or twice. Now I ask you very confidently, ain't she nice? Just cast an eye in her direction. Oh me, oh my. Ain't that perfection? Ain't she lovely? I repeat, don't think that kind of neat. And I ask you very confidently, ain't she sweet? 